Hey everyone, welcome back to my last play of, oh my god, I can't talk, <laughs> Mr. Detective Archives Ray Code. Uh, we last left off, we finally reached the point where what I kept thinking was the truth might actually be the truth, which is that they all worked together to pull this off, uh, because Karen killed Aiko. And they all seem to be really close with Aiko, though no one seemed to want to admit it. I don't know. I don't know. Kurumi made it sound like none of them liked her. I don't know. Um, but maybe it was just Karen who didn't like her. But it looks like they all plotted to kill her. Uh, which makes sense because the three how roots like all hit a dead end because it's not something that any one person could do alone. I got a little thrown off though because they kept saying like, oh, I'm not the culprit. And then we're like, oh, they're not the culprit. And then I'm like, okay, well, technically... They are, they all are, so a little misleading. Uh, but we're gonna keep going today and uh, I guess wipe out <laughs> most of the drama team today. <laughs> Cause they're all gonna drop dead. Three people, that's crazy. Um, yeah, thanks for uh, your patience. I know my upload schedule last week was shit. Um, I had it a uh, midterm and I was really nervous. It, it went better than I thought. There was one problem I did not know how to do, and there was only eight problems. So that's not great, you know, but it uh, could have been worse, right? Uh, and number seven, I, I think I did, but I also don't think I did it right. So six out of eight. <laughs> so this one, 75%. Great. Um, yeah, anyways, thanks for your patience. Um, I'm going to be better this week with uploading because I'll have time. Uh, and yeah, I'm excited to go to the next case. Uh, not that I'm not excited to see the end of this one. It's just like the resolve is always a little less exciting, right? Than like, oh my god, new investigation, new mystery. Uh, so yeah, let's see. Uh, I don't remember if we saw this whole scene. Secret behind their complicity. How exactly they cooperated together and the timeline of the crime. G got it. The timeline, huh? Then the first thing to discuss is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I stopped right here, I think. Um, first thing to discuss... Is this one. Oh, that scared me. Are you sure you want to take the how is the poison mixed into the glass root? Don't blame me if you die. That's first, right? Because it was in the chem lab. You have to do that before you bring it to the crime scene. Are you sure you want to pick that door? Y yeah, I think so. Hey, something feels wrong here. The, the door! Watch out! It's falling over! Ah! Wait, why wouldn't that be first? Yes, that was the wrong one. Try thinking about how the crime was committed from the beginning. Okay, wait. Am I misremembering? Didn't. Wasn't the poison. in the. Don't you need to put the poison in the glass before you can bring the glass to the hall? Am I dumb? What's the last one? How was the poison brought to the theater hall? You sure about that? Let's start with the poison being brought to the theater hall. What? It wasn't poisoned at the theater hall. It was poisoned in the chem lab. Isn't that first chronologically? Their conspiring began with how was the poison brought to the theater hall. It's a route we already explored to the very end. So let's blast through it. Hey, wait. Am I dumb? Don't you need to figure out the poison before you can bring it? The 
only person who could have brought the poison to the theater hall was... Yoshko, right? Yeah, the poison neutralizes after 30 minutes, so it had to be brought into the theater during the show. As the production assistant, only Yoshko could have done it. Looking back, the reason they chose poison as the murder weapon was to establish an alibi. The poison was only active for 30 minutes, which gave the other girls an alibi. Yoshko went to the lab for the poison as soon as the performance began. Listen, this whole conversation is making me feel like we're deciding that the poison was the first thing that was decided. So. She had the extra glass hidden in her bag. And after she brushed poison onto it. Isn't this the other door? She put it back in her bag and returned to her seat in the front row as if nothing happened. The problem is, what happened next? Yeah. Handed it to Warona, right? Yeah. The how was the poison mixed into the glass root? Oh, they wanted me to remember which color was first? That still doesn't make sense to me. I feel like this part comes first. Wow! It really connected! Alright! Let's keep going and reach the truth! Whoa! Again? I'll let it slide. Hey! You said Yoshiko handed the poison glass over to Waruna, but Waruna was performing on stage, right? How could she receive the glass while on stage? The only time I can think of is when they turned off the lights. Yeah, who knows Yoshiko how she sat on the right edge of the front row close to the wings, where the actors enter and exit from scenes. She probably stood up when the lights went out and left the poisoned glass near the right wing. Even if she couldn't get on stage, she could at least do that within five seconds. Then, Warna picked up the glass and hid it under her costume. The costume check happened before the performance, so she got around that by receiving the cup during the performance. I see. So they passed the baton during the five seconds the lights were out. Two of them must have rehearsed it as much as the rest of the play. But what happened after that? Suppose Waruna did get the poison glass. How did she swap it with the real glass while the play was still ongoing? A few moments after the blackout, there's a scene where Waruna approaches the shelf. It only lasts two or three seconds, but Waruna's hands on the shelf are completely hidden from the audience. At that moment, Warna could have switched out the original glass with the poisoned one. Okay, so... Where, where did she hide the glass? In her form-fitting dress on the top? But you tell me she hid it in the, in the bottom? Are there pockets? Like, okay, so let's say they're pockets. I don't think there are, but let's say there's pockets. How did she pull it out of her pocket, put it up without us noticing? And then wouldn't there be three glasses? Wouldn't there be two? Like, you know, where, where'd the other one go? In her, in her dress? <laughs> where, where in her dress? So they used to play itself for their seemingly impossible crime. <laughs> Talk about guts. This is something only thespians could pull off. Shinigami? <laughs> Isn't there a safer way down? Master, hurry up and break this one down too! Right.
All right, we got this one too. Wait, how is? Wasn't that? Wait, is? <laughs> wasn't that question the the next route? Why was that the question that I could have answered that earlier? You know, I didn't need I didn't need to go. Th Only a bit more. Let's keep going. That one was a really a dead end, honestly. Wait. Take a break. This is the final one. It's the how was the poison glass chosen route. We just answered that. Current A pointed to it. Why wasn't the question like, where the fuck was the glass? In her pocket? Up her ass? <laughs> I don't know. From here, it's exactly as we solved it before. Kurene told Karin beforehand to take the glass the spotlight hits first. Yeah. And then, after confirming the poison's glass from the catwalk above, the spotlight was pointed directly at it. Uh-huh. And that's the method behind the murder weapon. Method? Someone's more like that mystery me. <laughs> that solves this mystery. We've almost reached the truth. Seriously? That's terrible. Cats are running around like fucking psychos. Huh? Why? Because we're about to kill three people? Because I haven't gotten shit got me to fall for me yet. That's not gonna happen. Even if you stay here for a hundred years. In fact, I basically fear cats. You know, beyond the hate, there could be love. It's kind of like traveling the globe. You and I can go in opposite directions. But eventually, that's a stretch. Shit. Sorry, but eventually we'll meet. It is a stretch. Ugh. I feel sick. This is the last blow. Master, are you ready? Let's solve this thing. Right. Ooh, green. Yes, it fell. And behind that door is the Who Room. We finally made it. It's time to end this, Master. <sighs> and kill three people. Woo! Yeah, we're gonna ignore that middle route because that whole scenario was fucked, all right? I like suspending disbelief, but that was a lot. And the wall made no sense. Ooh. It looks like all the culprits are here. But there. Why do they look so sad? How oh, boring. You call yourselves the final bosses of the mystery labyrinth? Then start acting like it. Might as well guard the truth till we end at this point. <laughs> there. Oh, I don't remember the controls. It's kind of sad. I don't remember the controls. Back full kick jump.
this. Oh. Didn't they say the reason was for the, uh, was for the alibi? Master. Yeah. <sighs> it's Ico. It's Ico. I uh, yeah. It's Ico. Okay. All right. I feel like I'd do better if y'all just didn't talk about things since you mislead me. You're wrong. Huh? Come on. You did it, Master. Yeah. We're not gonna talk about it. <laughs> Why didn't we talk about it? Shut up! Don't come any closer. Here I am. I, I did it all alone. I don't know about the others. Don't come any closer. There's nothing connecting us. Oh, is it gonna be each picture? Yep. You're wrong. Huh? Come on. That's kind of cool though, because the picture does Great job. put them together. That's right. That's right. Go. Good talk. We're gonna jump now. It's the water gun. You're wrong. Huh? Come on. What's going on here? I thought they hated each other. No, that probably isn't true. Uh huh? What do you mean by that? If you put together the three photos they each have. What? So they're all in the same picture? That's the truth. Oh shit. No. No. Stay away. Stop messing with me. Oh no. Stop. 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 Stop it. Get <laughs> Sad. This is just a guess, but you three weren't actually on bad terms with each other, were you? In fact, it was all an act to get revenge for Aiko. You all cherish the same picture with her. It was originally a single photo of you all together, with Aiko in the middle. You were all close friends. And when you connect the pictures together... <clears throat> Why is this so dramatic? Yes, it's a picture. 
Everyone is there, smiling. So... why? Come on, we've got work to do before you get all sappy. Let's go. One more push and we'll be done with this labyrinth. <sighs> What would a hero do? A real defender of justice would defeat evil here and now and be done with it. But I'm no hero. All I want is the truth. And the truth is right here. So why go any further? Will solving this mystery really make anyone happy? Master, do you sympathize with them? That's not something a detective should do. Your job is to solve mysteries, isn't it? So the hard thing is like... Part of me is like, yeah, let him go. But like, the mystery labyrinth will descend, spiral into like, a disaster, right? Like, if we don't get rid of it? Unless they can get rid of it? You know? Like, oh, we accept the truth, we'll tell the police, like... We did it, we'll go to jail. You know, like, maybe? If so, you have to expose the truth. You have to prove it in a way anyone can understand and anyone can see. Detectives aren't defenders of justice. They're defenders of truth. Defenders of truth. A detective must never overlook a mystery. Any and all truths must be exposed. A detective must always prioritize solving a case. Emotions must be discarded to reach a perfect solution through a perfect deduction. It's easier said than done. Yuma, if you can't do it, I can take your place. No, I'll do it. I'll murder these three girls. I'll take responsibility. I'll see this through. Listen, murder is wrong, but like, I feel bad for them. Because like, fuck Karen, you know what I mean? She like killed a girl, lied about it, and no one was gonna do anything about it. Damn. I wonder how they found out. Yeah, where where is that? Wait, wait, is that? Is that in her butt? Like, I'm pretty sure. Um, if she pulled it out of her dress, wouldn't you have seen that? You know what I mean? I'm gonna let it go. I'm letting it go. I'm not. I'm not commenting. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, how do I? Oh, I can pick. Oh shit. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh. Oh, the light. Yeah, note and script. Oh, is that... Is that... Yoshiko, Yoshiko... Wait, what did Kurne... Okay, is that the light? Sorry. Uh, how do I switch the... Oh, there it is. Brick. Okay. Uh, bitch. So she hits the mud. Brick. Damn. Uh, chemistry lab. Poison. Okay, yeah. Come on. Where was she going? What was she doing? Poison? Poison? 
Never trust a big butt and a smile. Isn't that the... <laughs> oh. I, yeah. Uh, spotlight. There we go. Okay, okay, I got it. Um... Why did... Okay, that... Okay. A little confusing, I'm not gonna lie. Hi, Ko. Sad. Sad. <laughs> Wait, so like, why aren't they friends with Kurumi? Step right up! Struck an academy stage. The death of a high school girl casting a shadow over four bickering theater club members. Truth bombs are about to be dropped. Time for the deduction denouement. This case begins with Aiko's death six months ago. Aiko was thought to have committed suicide by jumping off the roof. But in truth, caught and murdered her. The shoes left on the roof had dirt on them from the flower bed of the crime scene. The blood stains on the bricks were also unnatural. And it was obvious that an amateur had faked it. If it wasn't a suicide, it would contradict Cotton's testimony. However, she didn't originally intend to kill Aiko. It was a crime of passion. So they got into an argument, Cotton saw red, then boom? Women are so scary! Yoshiko, Warona, and Kurane probably realized the truth behind what happened. The three teamed up to avenge Aiko. They used the dress rehearsal to commit this crime. Regardless of the reason, getting together to plan a murder is pretty crazy. Yoshiko and the audience to bring the poisoned glass into the theater hall. Once unsealed, the poison is harmless after 30 minutes. So, she went to the lab 15 minutes after the play began. So, were they acting, like, accusatory to each other to, like, throw off the scent? Or, like, they were half in disbelief that each other went through with it? You know what I mean? I don't know yet. Could have been neither. The poison container is too big to transport unnoticed, so she applied it to the glass in her bag with a paintbrush. Thus, the poison glass was created! She brought it back to the theater hall, then went on standby at the right end of the front row. Warna, who was acting on stage, was to switch out the poisoned glass. During the five-second blackout 30 minutes into the play, Yoshiko placed the poison glass in the wings. Warana, on stage, retrieved it and hid it under her costume. Then, in the scene where she approaches the shelf, she exchanged the glass there with the poisoned one. Switching in the murder weapon on stage while everyone is watching? What a pervy exhibitionist! I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna suspend my disbelief because that makes no fucking sense. Where the fuck did she pull it from, you know? What's perverted about that? And Kurene, on the lights, would guide Cotton to take the poisoned glass. Then came the duel of poison cups! The two glasses on the shelf had juice poured into them. Cotton and Warana shuffled them in a way the audience couldn't see. But Kurene, who was on the catwalk directly above the stage, saw exactly which glass held the poison. She confirmed the location of the poisoned glass shown the spotlight on it first. Cotton drank from that glass 45 minutes after the start of the play. Winner, winner! Poisoning complete! It would have been more interesting if Warna like accidentally got the glass somehow. You know? And then it would have been like technically Yoshiko and Kurane did it and Cotton would have been like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? <laughs> Good job! 
Kurne told Cotton of a change in stage direction, where the victim was to take the glass the spotlight hits first. Cotton followed this instruction to take the poisoned one. If I was her, I'd be like, why? <laughs> like, why? Hi, baby. The whole sequence of events for this crime would have been impossible for a single person. Their cooperation was also a means to conceal their involvement. But I can't shake the feeling that there was some other reason behind it. I mean, the you know. The disgusting criminals who conducted this murder are... Yoshko, Waruna, Kurame! You are the killers! Wait, what? They may have pretended to always be at odds with one another. But deep down, they were bonded through their shared admiration for Aiko. You're purring so loud. There's a murder thing going on. Shh. This is my answer! Was there really no other way? Was there no way to prove Cotton did this without killing her? That's not possible. Not in Kanai Ward. The Peacekeepers bend the truth whichever way they want to. The three girls couldn't get justice from them. Which led to this crime. But that... it doesn't make it right! How long did you put on an act for this? Aiko... was our sunlight. What is this? That face portrait is scary. Wherever she went, we were meant to be there with her. She was everything to us. We were together ever since we were young. Her dream was our dream. We were nothing special. But she called us her rivals. Those words encouraged us to carry on. But now she's gone. Everything's hopeless now. The three of us investigated Aiko's death. I used my parents' connections to view top secret case files. But no matter what we did, the peacekeepers refused to reopen the case. Because Cotton's father is a big shot at Amaterasu Corporation. That's why we had to do it ourselves. We wanted revenge. Listen, murder's wrong. But I do feel bad for them. Revenge became everything for us. That portrait's gonna haunt me, Yoshiko. And to get it, we pretended to fight amongst ourselves. We are actors, after all. But we don't have to anymore, right? We don't have to keep this up. We put on quite a show. Didn't we, Aiko? Oh, God. Aiko's like, I'm proud of you for <laughs> murdering that psycho bitch. Okay, honey, don't get wrapped up. Yeah, I forget how Spike Chunsoft knows how to literally destroy my heart. This leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Then again, most cases do. But... That's the end. We can finally return to the real world. Bro, Jesse Eagle doesn't know. I hope the girls open up like that in the real world, too. No. I don't think they can. Huh? Why is that? Oh, also, <laughs> where's Shinigami? Right here. Well, what do you think? Did you fall in love with me? I know you did. You must have, yeah? I already.
already told you, I will never fall for you. You are seriously getting on my nerves. That's okay, Shinigami. He'll forget you. Don't worry about it. You're annoying and exhausting. Uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <Desuhiko>? <laughs> <laughs> Did you think I was serious? <laughs> I was just testing the bond between you two. <laughs> Alright, are we just gonna joke and forget these three girls are about to die? That's not cool. Our bond? It's more like a curse. At least to me. Uh, right. <laughs> I was just testing. <laughs> I wasn't serious. At all. I didn't get rejected, okay? I didn't. Uh, all right. Just calm down. Anyway, let's do it. Time to exterminate the souls of the true culprits and destroy the mystery labyrinth. Wait, Shinigami. Do we really have to do this? I mean, they... They're murderers. The reason why doesn't matter. I make my living reaping the souls of criminals. Because I'm Shinigami! Surging bloodlust. Overflowing despair. The criminal soul of Shinigami. Shall expunge this cursed case! That's fucking depressing. My cat makes biscuits on my arm and her nails are sharp. Sorry, she was digging them into my flesh. She's cute though. <laughs> yeah. This case is fucked up, huh? I know. It is. It's sad. They're just gonna drop dead. When did you? Huh? What the? Wait, what just happened? Oh, oh, hold on, let's so calm down. What? What's going on? I knew it. <laughs> the evil murderers have been expunged once again. I got one more job to do. <laughs> Excuse me, everyone. The culprits behind this incident were Waruna, Karne, and myself. All three of us conspired to poison Cotton. Uh, the way we got her to ingest the poison was... I don't know what you people have done. But next time, it won't go your way. Remember that. Did you see that? 
<laughs> she was staring at me the whole time. She's got to be in love with me. Yeah, okay. Oh, fine. I guess she can keep the piece of my love as well. I'm going to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, fuck right off, Tatsuhiko. You don't understand what I'm going through right now. Hey, what's got you so down? All three of them just died out of nowhere. Nobody's to blame for that. There's no reason for either of us to feel guilty. That's Hiko, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Seems like all the memories from the mystery labyrinth are completely gone. Master, we're in the clear. All three of their deaths won't be your fault now. But they are! That's not what I'm worried about. Rumi? Girl, why are you happy? Thank you for saving me. I knew you'd come to the rescue. <sighs> anyway, are you alright? The peacekeepers didn't harm you, did they? No, I'm fine. Hey, Yuma? I don't want to get in the way of this tearful reunion, but maybe we should get out of here? It'll be trouble if the peacekeepers come back. Oh, right. Let's leave then. Oh, that's cute. I like that screen. We haven't seen that before, have we? Why? Why is it different? What's happening? Everything okay? The game break? <laughs> Oh no, I hear rain. Oh yeah, we're good. I'll go on ahead to the agency and put in a good word for you. I love his beanie. That's so cute. I don't really get how it all ended, but I have a hunch. Yuma, you did all the work, right? <laughs> yeah, I murdered them. Huh? Guess he's got good intuition. <laughs> Looks like I won't be calling you rookie from here on out. Thanks, bro. Let's keep working together, my man. Mind your manners as you walk your girl home. <sighs> wow, that's a hickle. That was actually pretty nice, okay? I don't forgive you, but I, that was nice. <sighs> <laughs> um... Did you murder those girls? Huh? What is it? This tension! Don't tell me! Is this where they make babies? <laughs> Did something happen? You seem down. Oh, well... Although the case was solved, three lives were lost. Right. I didn't expect Yoshiko and the others to... How do they explain that? Just spontaneous human combustion from the inside? I don't know. Um, could it be that their deaths are related to your forte? Girl, shh. What? What? Wow, we got another sharp one. Master, I hope you know this, but if you say anything about our contract... Oh, sorry for saying something so strange. I know I'm off, right? Ha ha ha, yeah. <laughs> Even if that were the case, you'd never tell me. <sighs> hey, Kurumi, there's somewhere I want to go. Will you come with me? I want to go into the garden so you can hit me with a brick. <laughs> huh? Sure, I guess. Sorry, that's not funny. I'm sorry. <clears throat> insensitive, insensitive. Poor Yuma. My god, if I was him, I would feel fucking terrible. You know what I mean? Like, I know they're murderers, but oh my god. Like, he probably feels like a murderer himself, you know? That's terrible. While well, Kurna is looking forward to an upcoming release, well, I, not anymore. Thanks for that game. That makes me feel great. The hideout. Wow, what a nice view. Of what? It's like a secret hideout. I 
didn't know that Kamasaki had a place like this. Please, help me save this city. Save this city, huh? I managed to save Kurumi by solving the case, but I killed those three girls. I'm responsible for their demise. If I had let the peacekeepers deal with it, at least their deaths could have been prevented. Yeah, but they weren't gonna deal with it, Yuma. What exactly did I even solve? It's not a true solution if we can't save everyone. What I gained in exchange for my memories isn't some convenient, mystery-solving tool. It's literally the power of a death god. What are you musing about? You can't reclaim the past, and you're not gonna get your memories back either. In the end, you just have to accept it. Accept it? Instead of believing in some vague thing like justice, just believe in the truth. They say there's only one truth, and there's only one type of person who can find their way to that truth. Detectives. Even if I have to sacrifice others to find it, I should let so many people die for the truth? Master, you keep going to extremes. It's part of why you're a greenhorn. Uh, seems like you still have much to learn under my guidance. What is the truth? Why did I become a detective to seek it? That's a question. You? Don't mind me, it's just the rain, Kurumi, it's just the rain. Huh? Oh, yes? I know I already said this, but thank you so much. You are exactly the kind of person I thought you were. What do you mean by that? <laughs> You're my hero. <laughs> I'm no hero. I was just trying to expose the truth. But thanks to you, I was saved. If you weren't around, I wouldn't be here today. That's why a detective who exposes the truth is a hero in my book. If there were more detectives like you in the city, maybe Aiko's death would have been solved earlier. I'm sure things would have been different. <sighs> yeah, funny thing is, there are. There is a guy who is a detective in this city, and he don't do jack shit, so... Kanai Ward hasn't seen a hero like you in forever. That's why it's always been so dark here. So please... Please continue to be our hero. A hero? Maybe before I lost my memories, I was trying to become someone's hero. This time, there was a steep price to be paid for exposing the truth. But even so, the truth must always be revealed. Damn, that was a quick turnaround in your train of thought. I want to believe I can save someone. I want to continue being the hero she says I am. Still, I don't want to use Shinigami's powers again. <laughs> don't act like you don't like it, Master. Well, I'm just glad you seem more motivated now. Oh, yeah. We made a promise, didn't we? I said I'd tell you about Kanai Ward's ultimate secret after the case was solved. Huh? Uh, oh, right. Hey... You seem like you weren't expecting much. Oh my god, that's such a Chiaki face. Oh god, that makes me emotional. <laughs> but that's where you're wrong. Just between you and me, I am Kanai Ward's only informant. Informant? Are you serious? A high school girl informant? I'm still a beginner, though. I started three years ago after taking over from my grandfather. Wait, what? Wait, what's an in- what? And now that the peacekeepers control the city, there isn't much of a demand for information anymore. Wait, that's like a job? No wonder you know so much about rumors. Besides... I haven't felt this nervous since I was chased by those peacekeepers. That also explains why the peacekeepers were after you. <laughs> if Kurumi is an informant, Maybe she does have some crucial information about Kanai Ward's ultimate secret. Oh shit. Um oh, I hate to be this person, but listen, this episode's getting long. 
And I gotta keep you guys wanting the next one, right? No, I'm kidding. That's never my that's never my my purpose. Okay, I'm happy y'all are here every week. I'm not gonna make you suffer. But the episode is getting long. Um, I'll try and record another one today though, and get you another one tomorrow. So, thanks so much for watching. If not tomorrow, then Monday. Uh, <laughs> as always, feel free to leave a like, comment, favorite, or subscribe. I'm really sad after that. Well, I interrupted my outro. I don't remember what I was saying. Uh, uh, f uh, become a member if you want. Um, yeah. And <laughs> until the next time. Lights off. Dark. Out.